say some shit to everyone in Ottawa. <laughs> uh, I'm going sledding and you're not. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the first official episode of Tracer Vision. For those of you who aren't familiar, this show is pretty much just a compilation of my non-parkour related clips that I slap together haphazardly every once in a while to keep my close friends and family in the loop as to my general well-being and daily happenings. What I've got for you today should be a real treat actually. I recently spent a week up in northern Ontario with a very good friend of mine, Mr. Eric Johnston. For those of you who don't know him, Eric is, he's the only other person like myself I have met in that we are both intelligent people who routinely and habitually make very poor decisions. So he's a lot of fun to hang around with. Uh, you're never really sure what's gonna happen next. And uh, I really like that about him. Uh, I was expecting this week to just be a real shock in terms of breaking me out of my uh, my same old routine and just kind of immersing myself in uh, in a strange new environment and he certainly didn't disappoint uh, I did a bunch of things I'd never done before and just all around had a wicked time ended up dislocating my elbow that's neither here nor there I mean accidents happen right my flight landed at uh, about 1130 or so and uh, Already I could tell I wasn't in Kansas anymore. The, uh, the docking bridge did not move in any way, uh, so they had to roll up a ladder to the side of the plane and have us all walk down onto the tarmac, which was pretty cool. And then after that, Eric got lost on the way back home to Fort Francis, which was, by the way, uh, already a three-hour drive, so that turned into a six-hour drive. And then I was shown to my room, which wasn't a room so much as... Um, an attic? A sparsely insulated attic. A frigid, well they called it the Windy Alley. And yeah, it was pretty aptly named. So here I am in Fort Francis. Landed uh, last night at about 11.30. And uh, took us five to six hours to get into Fort Francis because Eric took a wrong turn on the highway. So immediately after my flight, I got the pleasure of driving around in a forerunner with broken suspension for six hours. That was good. It was, it was real nice. Got up bright and early this morning, to crack a ten or so, and uh, just been hanging out with Eric and his very cool roommate DJ. <clears throat> and uh, DJ's fixing up his quad right now, and then I think we're gonna go sledding. Oh yeah, and a quick note about the room that I'm staying in. It's got this really awesome kind of horror movie vibe with the... I don't know if you can see that. It's like children's drawing on the ceiling and then big hole in the wall and stain of mysterious origin. So that's, that's good. I'm probably in a murder room. Yep. So we were all set to go sledding. DJ was going to jump on his uh, four-wheeler and follow us, uh, but the damn thing seized, wouldn't move at all, so we ended up hooking it up to Eric's bumper and driving it around the town of Fort Francis with me on the back of it to give it a little extra traction. And this gave me an excellent opportunity to actually get kind of a panorama of the town and uh, show you just, just the kind of place it is. It was early in the spring when I decided to go or to work up in the woods in North Ontario. And the unemployment office said they sent me through to the little empty with the survey crew. And the black flies, the little black flies, always the black fly, no matter where you go, I'll die with the black fly, but in my bones in North Ontario, I -O, in North Ontario. 
the man Black Kirby was the captain of the crew, and he said, I'm going to tell you boys what they're going to do. They want to build a power dam, we must find a way for to make the little app throw the other way with the black flies, the little black flies. Always the black fly, no matter where you go, I'll die with the black fly, picking my bones in North Ontario, Ohio, in North Ontario. So after about a couple hours of uh, driving around and trying to get this quad unseized, DJ finally gives up and he uh, loans Eric and I his sleds and goes inside uh, and Eric and I take off and go for a sled. And that's pretty much all we did for the next couple of days was uh, sled around and shoot guns. So here's some footage of that. States and go get some breakfast. And I'm gonna shoot some guns. Freedom! <laughs> I yeah. get my gas at freedom! <laughs> to load, it only takes five. Yeah. Sometimes it'll dump six. So you have to be careful. You put it in that? Yeah. Push down.
Well, there you have it. Nick's visit to Port Francis. It was an incredible learning experience and everything I hoped it would be. And it wasn't many of the things that I feared it would be. Though the culture was far different from anything I had experienced before, I immediately felt at home up there. Something about the atmosphere, the slow pace of life, everyone's general good-naturedness. It was a really easy place to spend a week. And that having been said, I'm sure living there would be something else altogether. I've got to applaud Eric for toughing it out up there for the last two years and for uh, really becoming a part of the community and uh, making a lot of nice friends. And uh, I'd really like to thank Eric and DJ for uh, putting me up for a week and uh, for making this entire experience possible. What can I say? I had a great time. I'll definitely go back.